Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. My wife wants an open marriage. So I've been struggling with this throughout the week and have run a pretty wild gamut of emotions, along with some pretty unhealthy coping mechanisms that just seems to constantly restart on me and need to hear some honest advice about how I should handle this. My wife and I have been together for 12 years and together we have three wonderful adopted children that are just oozing personality and confidence. I think together we make awesome parents and I love her with all my heart. Our marriage has not always been particularly smooth. She had a cancer diagnosis soon after we got married that was hard to deal with. She passed an STD to me that she got from her previous marriage that sometimes causes me and her physical pain. She had a bout of a couple of years with alcoholism that almost destroyed us, but we stuck it out, got therapy, and we worked together as a team. Over the last few years, my own health has begun to cause problems in her sex life. I am significantly overweight and have battled my weight my entire life. I have decided to get surgery to help me make significant changes in my physical well-being and have been working hard on being more active at home and at work and being careful about what I eat and how much. But another problem we run into in our sex life is that she has become increasingly more interested in BDSM play, often bringing verbal and physical abuse. I know that to the BDSM community this type of play is not abuse, but I very simply cannot think of another word for it, into the bedroom, in ways that have made me uncomfortable and neither of us has been satisfied for a while. I thought she was shitty on me, but she says she has not done anything. But she wants me to allow her to explore her interest in BDSM by meeting with a dom that she found online and has been talking to. A lot of her recent activities, strenuous exercise, snapping yourself with rubber bands, hitting herself hard enough to leave large bruises on her body, have been at the specific request of her dom. I don't know how to handle this. She says she thinks it will make our own relationship stronger, and to her credit, she has been more affectionate with me and the kids since this all came out. Logically, this kind of makes sense, but emotionally, I'm struggling. My self-worth has never been particularly high to begin with, and this has sent me into a bit of a tailspin. I do not want a divorce, neither to do that to our children, nor to give up on the pretty impressively comfortable life we have built together. But I also don't want to go outside my marriage, and wish I had it in me to keep her from doing the same. Can a polyamorous marriage survive with only one partner going outside the marriage for their sexual needs? Will I ever be able to delight myself again? I see bare a few end results here. I have to go along with this for now. If I can be okay with it and she is right and her relationship improves, then great. But every other option is disaster. Has anyone been in this position before? Let's check in with the community and see what they think. Ladita1321 says, She's already cheating by talking to this guy online and fulfilling their fantasies by self-harming. You said you both aren't satisfied in the bedroom. So basically at this point, considering sacrificing any satisfaction for yourself, for her, she can have it all, and you get, what? This isn't a fair setup. And it is apparent your self-confidence is very low if you're even entertaining this idea. You will resent her if you okay this, but honestly, it kind of sounds like she's going to go ahead and do what she wants anyway. It seems like there's a lot of difficulties in the history of your relationship. At this point, you have to take care of yourself. Lose the weight. Get healthy. Gain some confidence. Have some frank discussions with your wife about what you want. See where you are then. You can't control her, but you can definitely control yourself. And what's the worst case? The marriage doesn't work out? You'll come out as the best version of yourself possible. The OP responds, Well, I get to keep the woman I love around me, just not in the way that I had hoped for. She's a good person and I adore her, and she's a wonderful mom and a good friend. Also, altogether, we are pretty well off financially. If we were living apart, I could care for the kids easily, but I could never provide for them the way her job can. While I make $50,000 a year, she sometimes doubled that, and I wouldn't want to see the kids have to move to a lesser house or have a lesser life because I was too selfish to try and make this work. Another thing is that I don't have much outside my family life. When I met my wife, I kind of came in as her knight in shining armor. She was broke a lot and a single mom and was lonely and I showed up and made things better. My last relationship before her was a fiancé who also cheated on me a few years before and I had just gotten past that when my friends talked me into getting back in the dating game. When we got married though, I lost contact with most of my old friends except for over Facebook. My wife threw out most of my old clothes 
insisting they made me look bad. She had me cut my long hippie hair and shave my beard. My weight was pretty well under control until about five years ago, and I ballooned. Right around the time that we had problems with her drinking. I don't know who I am without her, and I'm so afraid of being lonely and being without the one person who I think drives me to a better person, and I don't want my kids to think that I didn't do everything I could to make this work. You're right that I need to work on myself. Maybe that's the key. Maybe I just need to cut her out of my mind for a while and just become the person I like best. If I can ever actually like myself, that is. Anyway, thanks for listening. Our next comment comes from Rough Mango 8008 Quote, You're right that I need to work on myself. Maybe that's the key. Maybe I just need to cut her out of my mind for a while and just become the person I like best. If I can ever actually like myself, that is. Anyway, thanks for listening. End quote. This is the best answer here, and it's your own. I need to do this as well, for different reasons in my marriage. I know how hard it is to do that, especially when you dedicated so much of your time to your spouse and forgetting about yourself. I wish you strength and I hope you find your own worth without her, even if you stick together. Moving on to the next story. His affair partner and I have been texting, and now I don't know how to feel. I know what will be said. She's evil. She slept with my husband. She's evil. But I had to know if he was feeding the same to her as he was to me. He is. The I don't knows, the doubts, no promises. He admitted to her we slept together on vacation, but we both realized, especially her, that it was probably only said because I threatened I would. She told him everything will come to light and he needs to stop the charades. Said she assumes everything comes back to me eventually, so it's unsustainable to keep spinning a web of lies. Says she was depressed when we left on vacation, as she figured we were working things out. But then, she found a sense of peace that at least a decision had been made, and she was free. He told her our trip was an escape from reality and things went well. But then he and I had a talk, and he was no more closer to a decision. She told him it was unfair to be intimate with someone and then not give them an answer. She hasn't been physical with him and, despite what I think, she too doesn't want to be used either. Said he's using her emotionally. She was surprised I hadn't told anyone. She won't say anything because it should come from me. I'm the least twisted in this. That she knows this will mean isolation, but that it's going to happen sooner or later. Said her family is all easy to find on Facebook, and I should tell them too. That she deserves this. She knows that I'm an empath. That it shows with how I was having a simple conversation with her. But I don't deserve your empathy, and frankly, I don't know if it could even be accepted in any way, shape, or form. I am just tired and exhausted of the back and forth and deception to you and everyone at this point, and I told him that. She told him that if things continue to be normal between he and I, meaning no actions to separate have been made, she'll take it as reconciliation. Said she can't take the exhaustion anymore, the gaslighting, the trickle truth. And today, he said he can't bring himself to make a move to do anything to start a separation, and he said you gave him the wedding rings, and that was sad. I don't know what you're thinking or for you to take that as hope or for it to take away hope. I don't honestly know what he's thinking since things may be said, but actions aren't taken. But F it. You have a right to know is on my mind. We continued to text today. I told her I had tried on multiple occasions to end things with him. That I spoke to a lawyer. That I told him I was filing. To her, it seemed he was simply waiting for me to be the one to initiate it. But now she sees I have tried and that he still doesn't want that. It's helping her see where his mind is at. I don't want to lose you two either, but have accepted that that is the case. I wronged you so badly, even after our talk with communication. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't know. If it makes you feel better, like I said, I know I'll get to a point where I won't be able to take it anymore. So if anything, maybe he's just waiting for me not to be an option. I don't freaking know. I kind of just want our friends to know at this point, so the readjustment can begin. But that will occur at its own pace. Enjoy your weekend, and thank you again for being open and talking. If you have questions, I'll answer them. Combing the memory, it seems like we've pretty much talked about everything. So yeah, here I am confused and conflicted to all hell. I know it could be all lies, but something in me says it's not. Maybe it's my empathetic nature. But it was very helpful to speak to her again and get all the answers I needed. Let's shake in with the community. Starting off with Snoo Owls 46. I think you are giving too much time to what your husband thinks and wants. It's about you and what you want for your life. 
Maybe you should be angry your husband is so indecisive. I'm an empath too, but I had to learn over time not to take care of other people first. It's a hard situation for you, and you are in charge, but from my perspective, I would be crushed. He's so indecisive, and I'm not sure I could recover from that. You deserve the best. Next comment comes from NWTGM1. Here's another issue. The affair partner may be lying too about things, just like your wayward husband. She too is a wayward. They downplay, minimize, or cast blame to the other. In no way do I think she is in the same boat as you here. Here's the thing. I've been on this forum and others, and unless the betrayed spouse takes a hard line, makes it known to the wayward it's all in with reconciliation and they must do everything on the list. Yes, they take a step back sometimes, but not on the contact with a fair partner. Or the relationship is done. If the betrayed spouse doesn't do that, allows a wayward to waffle nine times out of ten. They repeat or continue being the a-holes they are, and it ends anyway. Those betrayed spouses who take the hard line, draw that line, are clear with the boundaries. The few waywards who adhere, there is more of a chance of reconciliation for real. I've seen it over and over again. A betrayed posts, I should have listened. Fortunately, in my experience, my wayward husband, the moment he was caught, cut all contact, scheduled therapy. He did those two things without me giving him the list. The OP closes this out. Oh, trust me. I fully know nobody's in my boat. He once said, We're all hurting, and I cut him off. I said neither of them could ever feel what I'm feeling. They might share hurt because they were the betrayers. But as the betrayed, there is no way they could even feel a fragment of my pain. At this point, I don't really want a reconciliation. I look at him almost as a stranger, but I'll be damned if they get a happily ever after. I even told her what his mom told me, that she would never accept the affair partner. That his whole family, who loves me deeply and dearly, would always resent her and I will always be a part of their group. She has no real future with him, but she'll find out in due time. And I will tell her family. They're ultra-religious and will probably ostracize her for years to come. And she deserves it.